I hope this works. I'm going to start sharing my screen in one sec. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, Philip, maybe you can write me quickly on Telegram whether this works because we don't have any feedback uh, loop. I'll, uh, first of all, I want to um, thank everyone for joining this conference. It's always great to um, see so many people actually virtually see. I don't see anyone at the moment, but uh, it's great to be here to be able to introduce you to what we guys do at um, Börse Stuttgart Digital Exchange. My name is uh, Max von Wallenberg. I'm the CEO of uh, BS Dex, which is the Börse Stuttgart Digital Exchange. And I will talk a bit today about the state of crypto exchanges 2020 um, as a primer for today's conference. Uh, it's always good to kind of show everyone where we are in terms of the crypto ecosystem um, and especially the um, exchange market. I'll jump right in. Um, in terms of crypto spot trading being still very much dominated by a few exchanges. Um, first of all, it's very hard to get legitimate exchange volume, which is uh, in itself quite weird because like we're in the um, blockchain DLT industry, which should be all about trust and transparency. Um, yet it's very hard to get you know legitimate spot volume data. But um, the block research does a pretty good job to aggregate data volumes on legitimate exchanges. Still 67%, 67% of trading is uh, on Coinbase, uh, is on Binance, uh, followed by Coinbase with 8.1%, LMAX, Kraken, Bitfinex, and Bitstamp. So we see here that like the trading of uh, of spot cryptos is still very much a um, a, a very uh, you know monopolistic structure. We have DeFi entering the space um, very aggressively in July, August, and September really with volumes exploding, hitting an all-time high of 23.5 billion of trading volume. Uniswap and Curve here are the biggest um, uh, animals in the room, grabbing 65% market share and 22% market share, uh, respectively. Um, we see, uh, as Brazil Sugar Digital Exchange, decentralized trading as uh, a key um, element of, of, the, um, of the trading uh, in the crypto markets, yet um, centralized trading is still very much dominant. Um, and that's mainly um, due to people, you know, there's a usability issue of, um, of DeFi trading. People still trust um, their, their money with kind of branded centralized exchanges. And that's why like volumes here are still tiny in comparison to like the rest of the industry. Crypto derivative trading now makes up about 40% of total volume. Um, looking at crypto compares data, um, we see um, the share pretty significantly rising um, over um, this year and the last one. Um, and this is mainly due to kind of institutional players entering the market, CME and other um, exchanges starting to, um, to list crypto derivatives and also leverage derivatives, which of course really drives volume here. Um, an interesting development here is that the Bitcoin balance on exchanges is now at a two-year low. So we saw about 15% of uh, Bitcoin leaving exchanges um, since the high in um, kind of March 2020. So during the Corona crisis, like we saw the high, I think of about uh, uh, three billion um, locked on exchanges, and that has been reduced. The possible reason here is it's not necessarily bad for the markets but we see um, people moving their, their, like investing more significant sums of money in crypto, meaning uh, they don't wanna leave it on exchanges, but move it into long-term storage. People start investing via crypto funds, ETNs, and also use crypto banks um, and brokers to access the market, which don't necessarily leave the funds on exchanges. And then of course you have DeFi trading, which I just talked about previously. As I said, not necessarily a bad thing for the industry, it's just sort of a maturing of the market. If you look at kind of the traditional equity markets, people don't tend to like obviously leave their money on exchanges uh, or with brokers, um, but in, in, in other means. Institutional crypto trading is really gaining momentum. There's a very good Cointelegraph research report, which came out, I think it was only earlier this week, and they asked uh, specifically in the German speaking region, um, whether your company has already invested in crypto assets in the past. And 
Uh, I was astonished to see 36% of respondents saying they had in some shape or form already exposure to crypto in the past. Um, and that, uh, you know, is anywhere between one and 5% of uh, assets under management. So this is, you know, a significant uh, amount of money that's entering this space. And uh, I look forward to like this, this, you know, even accelerating in the last, in the next kind of one to two years. Institutional crypto trading is professionalizing as well. We see a whole host of, of uh, services springing up, just like in the traditional market. You have brokerage, market makers, trading messengers, which is almost like a Bloomberg um, messenger for trading, clearing and settlement infrastructure, custody, execution services. There's, so there's a lot of um, institutionalization of this uh, space happening. And we see um, you know, this very much uh, happening in sort of the last... I would say 12 to 18 months. And um, there's way more to come here and the system very much is maturing and getting ready for uh, institutional traders to enter the space. Um, big institutions are starting to embrace digital assets. We see JP Morgan launching a new blockchain unit, Onyx, um, despite Jamie Dimon saying a couple, I think it was two years ago that uh, Bitcoin is a fraud. And uh, now they're building a hundred person team and launching their own JPM coin. So the tides have changed. Um, PayPal entering the space with supporting uh, crypto trading, uh, buying and selling, and Singapore's biggest bank, DBS, um, launching a crypto exchange. So um, this has only uh, hit the news yesterday. Uh, it quickly disappeared again um, from the news. Uh, maybe they're not ready yet uh, to announce, but like there's a lot of stuff happening uh, in this institutional realm of the market. Big buyers. At the moment, really on the centralized uh, system are funds, ETPs, and corporate treasuries. We see, obviously, the, uh, the big elephant in the room is Grayscale with 4.9 billion euro um, of, of Bitcoin, or I think, I think it's uh, their total crypto holdings. You have CoinShares, um, you have BDCE. These are sort of the, um, the, the exchange-traded uh, products. And then you have corporate treasuries investing in the market, like MicroStrategy, um, buying 422 million uh, worth of uh, crypto. The CEO, I think yesterday announced he personally holds about, I think it was $200 million uh, worth of crypto. So um, they're going all in on this asset class. Um, and you have some smaller funds like HUD8 um, and you have Square that also started investing uh, their treasury capital. Um, yet crypto still has a, what I would say, Google and reputation problem. So Google works very much or news work, work very much like the, um, the classic clickbait industry. You know, when you write about 10 cryptocurrency scandals you need to know about, people will click on that. Um, the BitMEX news, um, the OKEX news, um, for, all of this is very much clickbait and people, you know, like to read these articles, yet this is not really what we need in the industry. We need news like the PayPal, the JP Morgan, that's, that's sort of what, what we need. We need traditional big players entering this space to, you know, show people that it's a legitimate asset class um, and, you know, an asset class especially that they can trust. But how do you build trust in this market? Um, there's only in Europe two exchanges with an MTF license, um, and that would be BSDEX, which is us, versus Stuttgart Digital Exchange and Kraken. So there's, if you will, a lot of, uh, a lot of movement in this market, a lot of um, big exchanges entering the market, yet, you know, on the regulatory side, we're really lagging behind. And that's precisely why we are, as Spurs Stuttgart, think it's so important to build a trusted uh, and highly regulated trading venue for, for digital assets. What's the next wave? The next wave, in, in, in my opinion, will be white glove, full service crypto banks. So we're not just talking about trading here. We're talking about one stop shops for um, gaining exposure to the asset class. You know, customer service, people are, they want to call, have someone to call. Let's say, you know, you want to you wanna, um, uh, clear your inheritance uh, rules. What happens, you know, if, if someone passes away, you need someone to, to call up and make this, you know, as investable as, as classic equity instruments. Taxes, you need an OTC desk uh, to trade large volumes. Good UI UX, regulatory safety, KYC AML and consumer protection. These are all things that sort of a full service crypto bank uh, will offer. And this will be, you know, the next two to three years, we will see a lot of traditional players starting crypto banking units with like a full suite of services, um, you know, that, that as an end consumer I can use and, and trust. 
Security token offerings, we'll talk a lot about that today in the conference. Um, there, there's a lot of buzz around them, um, but there's kind of five things that are required to make this work for, for the masses and to make it a real IPO alternative as a financing mechanism. Regulatory clarity, what um, Philip Sander just talked about, there's EU legislation in progress um, and in Germany specifically regarding this. Um, so that's, that's a requirement. Then you need a strong issuer, but there's many firms that offer the issuance of security tokens. So that's not really a blocker as well. You need a secondary market. We as BS stacks are really going uh, very strong and all in on security tokens and you know, are very um, actively working on listing um, or being compatible with digital assets, uh, uh, so securitized digital assets. Liquidity is critical. Without liquidity, you're not an attractive, um, the SEO is not an attractive value proposition. So what we as Börse Stuttgart do, we go for cryptocurrency trading first to build up the liquidity and security tokens second. So we are, you know, at day one, when you want to list an, a security token or want to do an STO, um, that the liquidity comes with the exchange. And last but not least, it's retail investors reach. There's a company called Primary Bid. Uh, they announced the funding round, um, I think it was two days ago, and they basically connect retail investors with IPOs. And uh, they published a statistics that um, said 20% of share capital of FTSE 250 companies are retail investors. So it's not just an institutional game here, but we need the retail investor reach to make STOs and digital uh, securities a, um, a viable alternative to IPOs. So to briefly explain the um, the versus Stuttgart digital asset ecosystem. We have a variety of brands in our ecosystem that really, and we want to touch the entire value chain of, of trading. So we have Bison, which is our retail brokerage. So um, we would recommend everyone to go to the app store, download the app. It's easy, simple, and um, you know gives people the, the quick exposure to crypto um, in, a, in a convenient way. We have the digital exchange, um, which is the BSDEX, where I'm the CEO of. It's trading, uh, secondary market trading um, as part of a multilateral trading facility, MTF. Open order books, we're supporting API trading, we have B2B support, so contact us if you want to open institutional trading accounts. Uh, and it's fully made in Germany, um, as well as Bison uh, and all our other brands. We have custody with Brothers Stuttgart Blocknox. Um, which is a uh, ISO TÜV certified custodian, part of Brazil Stuttgart Group as well, who um, holds and the, the 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 custody assets for BSDEX and Bison. And then we have the issuance part um, for the primary market, which we do as part of our Brazil Stuttgart Digital Ventures arm. So as you can see here, we're really moving towards this full suite. What I mentioned before, becoming sort of this 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 end to end service for every anyone who wants to get exposure to crypto assets and uh, hopefully very soon also um, uh, security token offerings. And we look forward to be, you know, becoming your, your trusted partner here. Um, I want to close off also with the, um, the couple of words about where I, you know, where I see this, this ecosystem going. I think we're still in the very first inning here um, with regards to how we, wh where this market will go. Um, I think we are all early adopters. We are all very bullish on this asset class. But what we need to make happen here is to bring this, um, to bring really this trust and white glove to the space. We need to, you know, make people uh, very, you know, we want we need to make it very easy for people to get exposure to the market. We need to make STOs a very viable alternative to IPOs, and we need to think big as a as a uh, you know early crypto adopter here and and make crypto as an asset class especially interesting for institutions to enter the market we're talking big insurances pensions etc this is money uh, that's uh, on orders of magnitude what's already in the market what will hit the market the next couple of years and uh, we look forward to it so with that um i uh, will close off and look forward to very interesting discussions today um, I'll also join a panel later on about institutional um, crypto trading and yeah, look forward to uh, any questions. Please feel free to contact me on Telegram um, or just uh, drop me an email and um, thank you very much. Here are my contact details, by the way.